please state your name. Gary Malosky. Um, and your birth date? 10 12, 1947. And your current address? Grand Forks, North Dakota. Um, and can you state the branch of service you served in? U.S. Army. Um, and what was your rank? First Lieutenant. And um, were you drafted or did you enlist? I volunteered draft. Um, where were you living at the time? In Argo, well, east of Argo, in the farm. Um, do you get a choice in the service branch? or? I volunteered you? Army. Okay. Um, why did you pick the service branch that you joined? No particular reason. Just my brother was in it, so, mm -hmm. so I decided to go there too. Um, do you recall your first days in service? Yeah, I landed in an airplane at Fort Polk, Louisiana on Thanksgiving Day, 1966. And uh, I had a turkey drumstick I could have pounded a nail with. That's how hard it was. <laughs> I, I recall it well. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did it feel like, like your first days of service, not the turkey drumstick? <laughs> <laughs> it was... Sort of exciting. Something, you know, a farm boy just going from college into the service and and almost spent a quarter in college and and then I I joined it. College wasn't for me, so um, can you tell us about some of your boot camp or training experiences? Well I did my basic in uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana. I did AIT in uh, Fort Ord, California. Then I went to uh, Infantry uh, Officer Candidate School in Fort Benning, Georgia. Um, do you remember any of your instructors? Sergeant Lamb was my basic training sergeant. I remember him. I'll remember him the rest of my life. Any he stories <laughs> you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just he just. Tough. He was a tough little guy that could run forever, and he, he was a tough son of a bitch, is what he was. <laughs> How do you get through it? <laughs> well, I guess I'm that way too, sort of. <laughs> or used to be, anyway. I didn't always look like this. <laughs> Where exactly did you go while you were serving? Well, after uh, Officer Candidate School, I got my commission there. And then I went to uh, Fort Bliss, Texas, uh, as uh, was in charge of a cadre of instructors for processing overseas replacements for Vietnam and, and training on how to use the M16 rifle. And ran a range and did that. I don't know how many people, thousands of people would qualify and train. And then from there, then I got orders for Vietnam myself. Um, so from that I went, I was sent down to uh, Jungle Warfare School in Panama mm -hmm. and I graduated from Jungle Warfare School with my Jungle Expert badge down there and then I went over to get on. Um, do you remember arriving and what it was like? It was a little bit intimidating. I mean not knowing exactly what was going to happen. I knew I was going to the 1st Infantry Division. There were seven of us that went to the same battalion. I remember the helicopter ride at Guan Loi, Vietnam, from uh, Benoit, which was treetop level for about 85 kilometers. I remember that quite well. Wow. Vividly, actually. <laughs> were you scared? I mean... No, no the, the adrenaline was pouring. <laughs> but nobody would take a shot at you? No. Well, I don't know if they did. We were moving pretty well. <laughs> um, what was your job or assignment? My first job was a recon platoon leader. Uh, spent a lot of time at that. Uh, did probably three months as a recon platoon leader. Then I got really sick. I don't know. Uh, some form of malaria or, or something. I wound up in the hospital in Benoit. 
for, I don't know, a couple, three weeks. And I came back and I went to a rifle platoon. Oh. And I was a platoon leader. Nice. Did you ever see combat? Yeah, quite a bit. Um, were there a lot of casualties in your unit? Quite a few. Um, can you tell us about a couple of your most memorable experiences? If you want to. Yeah. No, I don't really care to expound on that. Okay. okay. Um, were you ever a prisoner of war? No. Um, were you ever awarded any medals or citations? Yeah, I've... I've got a couple of bronze stars. I've got Vietnamese Country Cross. Air metal. You've been quite. He's been. I don't know how to say it. He's been. I've been through the ringer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, how did you stay in touch with your family? <clears throat> well, letters when I could. That's about it. Here's a good one. What was the food like while you were there? Mainly I was on sea rations. I was out in the field. What are sea rations? What, what, the sea what? rations are canned World War II uh, ham and lima beans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> different. Canned foods. Uh, yeah, canned, canned uh, rations. Were they any good? No, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> But they got you through, <laughs> and you get a couple of cigarettes with it, and you get a. Once in a while, we got a warm can of beer. It was pretty good, but <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was wasn't living pretty good. Spend about sixteen days in the field, and then we come in for three, and then go back out again. What would you do in those three days? In the three days, come back to base camp and just unwind a little bit and go to the officer's club, have a beer, just clean up, get fresh socks, fresh equipment. Um, did you guys have plenty of supplies or were supplies kind of scarce where you guys were? No, well, we never ran out of ammo, so that's the main thing. Um, were you ever put under um, a lot of pressure, stress while you were serving? Yeah, I was responsible for, well, to start off with 23 men in my platoon. I, I've lost a few of them. I've lost a lot of wounded. I don't know how many wounded, tons. Uh, then I went to company executive officer. I was in charge of the, the rear supplies and stuff. Then I went to company commander. So, yeah, and that's 235 men under me. Yeah, a lot of stress. Yeah. Was there anything special, like a little thing that you did for good luck? Just pull that steel pot down a little tighter. <laughs> 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 Try to get it to the ankles if you could, look like a turtle. <laughs> How did people entertain themselves while you guys were over there? Just the normal camaraderie you have among men. Just come back to base camp and stuff, they'd be having their guitars out and singing and we're raising hell and drinking beer and, and then put it all away and go back out again. Um, what do you do when you left? I became a border patrol agent. Do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events while you were serving? Well, it might not be humorous to other people, but it was to us at the time. One of my guys got caught in an opening and a machine gun opened up on him. And uh, he had a purple grenade on his gun belt, or on his weapon. And 
gook around, hit it, and set off a purple grenade, and he's getting his ass fried. <laughs> <laughs> Standing out there in the middle of an opening with machine guns shooting at him and purple smoke rising up to show where he was. <laughs> but that was sort of funny. But we, we sort of eliminated the problem and went on to the next one. Um, what did you think of your officers or fellow soldiers? I thought they were great, good guys, solid. Did you ever keep like a personal diary or journal, like a recollection of events? No, I spent 38 years trying to forget I was there. Do you recall the day your service ended? Uh, I, it ended a little bit early because my cousin got killed over there, and they gave me an early out to go to his funeral, and so I got out the 26th of October, 1969, for his funeral, I remember that. I was supposed to go until November 1st. Did you go to work when you got back, or did you go back to school? I went to, well, I went to school for a little bit. School wasn't for me, so then I went into law enforcement. When I was a police officer in Warren, Minnesota for about 10 months, I'm just working part-time. Then I worked for the Sheriff's Department here for a while, and then I went on the Border Patrol. Did you make any close friendships while you were in the service? Well, I tell you, the seven guys, the seven officers that I went with, we were friends, I mean, but I'm the only one to come home. So, no, I sort of don't maintain friendships, so. Did you ever join a veterans organization? I've been a member of the BFW, or the American Legion here for 40 years, 35, 40 years, I don't know. Um, but I, I don't go to meetings and so. stuff. Um, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Well, I think everybody should serve in the military. I, I think it makes you grow, it makes you appreciate your country, it makes you appreciate what you have. You go see other countries, you see other people, and you realize how good you do have it here. Is there anything you'd like to add that we didn't cover? No, just, it's an honor to serve your country. And those that don't, I don't have much time for it, to be truthful. So. Well, from all of us, we are very grateful that you did this. And just thank you for everything. And thank you for your service. Thank you. Yes. Okay.